Hi, how are you doing today? I'm good. Good, Sergeant Renee, Grease Police Department. Do you have your driver's license, registration, proof of insurance? Yes. Do you know why I'm stopping you today? No. I have had a week. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't even know how to start. There was this video that released that was taken of me getting pulled over and I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it um, but I will link to that video in the description <laughs> um, no spoilers but it was on the news and it was iconic Look, I'm just a mess right now. I've been wearing this hoodie for like three days and I kind of need a shower and it's just not, it's, you know, life is crazy. There's always those things that like happen and you see them on the news or you see them like go on Ellen and you're like, oh, that doesn't really happen. Like you don't really believe it. And then it happens to you and you're like, This is the type of thing where you you think it only happens to people who have Make-A-Lish or who are very rich. Um, I'm neither of those and it happened to me. So, always have hope. So, let me take you back to early May. She was going to take me uh, to practice driving because I'm on my permit and that's something that you have to do on your permit. Um, you're not just... For anyone who didn't know, you're not just magically blessed with the ability to drive, you do have to learn. <laughs> I'm pretty good at driving, I just need to practice on, you know, going on like the highway more. So that's what we were gonna do on Friday. So then Friday rolls around and my mom is like, hey, maybe don't wear sweats. <laughs> Cause my typical like, you know, just everyday style is like a, a hoodie and like actual sweatpants. I'm wearing pajama pants right now. They have llamas on them. And I was like, why? And she then said that she was taking me somewhere uh, and that I would want to take pictures. And so I was like, Okay, and she said I could drive there because that was gonna be my practice. And she said the practice beyond this day specifically was all just like a ploy so that she could take me to this surprise that was on the highway. Oh. <laughs> and so then all of a sudden she's like, oh, and Sam's going too. And Sam is my brother and, and I'm like, why? Uh, and she was like, oh, he'd, he'd want to take a picture too. And so I was like, okay. So all of a sudden I'm dressed. I'm not in a hoodie anymore. I'm in jeans and a flannel and I'm in the van and I'm driving my mom and my brother. And I'm under the mentality that we're going to go somewhere in the country and take pictures of something. So I assumed it was like, horse related because I love horses. So then I'm just driving down, minding my own business and it starts to rain. It starts to rain really hard. And it was like literally clear blue skies and then all of a sudden downpour. So when you're a permit driver, I, I mean even licensed driver who have had their license for 25 years hate driving in rain. And we were driving by the library and um, in like the same area as the library, like the same parking lot, um, is the police station, um, the precinct. So I was like, okay, do you want me to pull into the library parking lot while you, so that you can text this person that we're going to see and for the C prize and, um, you know, figure it out. So she's like, okay, yeah, pull into the library parking lot. So I did, and I was like, I'm, she was, and then she said, you may as well just practice parking while you're here. Cause um, I hadn't practiced backing into spaces a lot. So I was like, okay. 
And so I was just driving around, again, minding my own business, with no clue in the world, and all of a sudden, there's a cop car behind me. So then all of a sudden, his lights go off, and his siren goes off, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm not doing anything wrong, so maybe he's just trying to go around me. So I, like, kind of pull over, definitely leaving enough room for him to get past me, and he doesn't go by me. So I'm like oh, he's pulling me over. So I just pull into a parking space and my mom is like, just be calm, just be calm. So I'm being pulled over. Like, I, I, at this point, I'm being pulled over. He's getting out of his car. He's coming over to my window. He's like, in his full get up and he, he's, he's a for real cop. My mom is like trying you know, she's like, you weren't doing anything wrong. I don't know why you're being pulled over. So he comes to the window and he's like, hey, uh, <laughs> he's like, how are you doing? And I'm like, good, even though I was really, really nervous. So he comes to the window and he's like, license and registration. I'm like, okay. So I give it to him. And this was one of the most traumatizing parts because I had to give him my permit and my permit picture actually looks like a literal mugshot. And, well, because all my life, people are always like, oh, you have to like have your hair brushed back and you're not allowed to smile and all this stuff. And I, as a naive child, thought that they were talking about licenses, but you're, they were actually talking about passports, obviously. So when I went to get my permit and they were taking my picture, I was like, oh, I'm not supposed to smile. <laughs> and I, so, and I actually was not thinking that I would get my picture done. I don't know why. I just thought I was going for the, you know, test. And so then, I, and so my hair was not cute. <laughs> and then, and so I was like, oh, I'm not supposed to smile, but I'll like smile a little, like, you know, just a little and see if I can get away with it. So I'm like this, you know, kind of creepy, but you know fairly normal. Then literally the second that I stop smiling and I'm about to blink thinking they already took the picture, they take the picture. <laughs> they, it's like they did it on purpose. They waited until my eyelids were half closed. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't even tell me. They just took it and they're like, oh, this is fine. My permit picture is like this. Yeah that bad. So it looks like an actual mug shot because they put it in black and white. And so yeah, that was traumatizing to have to have someone see that. I was hoping that no one would ever have to see that and that I would just get a new picture when I got my license and that could be forgotten about. But then he goes, do you know why I'm pulling you over? And I say no. Well, then he goes, you have a tail light out. And I'm like, oh, okay. So then um, the officer goes back to his car and he's there for a while and I'm just talking with my mom and my brother's in the back seat. And my mom is just, you know, like being calming and stuff. She's like, I'm so sorry because she knows it's, you know, it's her car. And she had the tail on. She's like, I'm so sorry. I, um, you just, just be respectful, just be nice. Uh, just, she's like, just keep being nice to him. Um, I don't. I, I, she was like, I, maybe he'll give you mercy because you're on your permit. And so I was like, okay, okay. And she was like calming me down. So then he comes back to the, to my window and he gives me back my awful permit. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, okay, I have good news and bad news. And so obviously I'm like, what could possibly be good news? Um, and he's like, the bad news is I unfortunately have to give you two tickets. And so literally, if you watch the video, you can see my face change. And I'm like, just in sheer like terror. And so then he goes, and the good news is that they're tickets to see Shawn Mendes in concert. Jigs up. It was all a big ploy that 
my mother construed to surprise me with tickets to see him. And so I was very confused. Um, I just like look at my mom like what? And I can tell by her face that she's like, okay. And she, she's like smiling and I'm, and then I start crying. I actually, surprisingly on the video, I seem pretty composed, but like after he stopped filming, I was like sobbing. <laughs> so my mom, her love language is gifts. She loves to give um, gifts to people and like surprise people like, so much so that she'll like do anything she can to make it happen and we know a lot of cops and none of them could do it so she just walked into the uh, precinct and was like hey this is what I want to do can you help me do it and they were like heck yes the story behind why my mom worked so hard to get those tickets is a long story. I have a disease that I was born with and it's um, it's an incurable disease. I won't go into it. That's, <laughs> that's for another video of, you know, me explaining the disease, but I have a disease, but I also have a very, um, very mild form. It's a rare disease. So um, it's called muscular dystrophy and it's very, very rare and there's no cure. There's just kind of medications that can help with it. Um, and it's basically characterized by attacking your muscles and almost, you know, deteriorating your muscles over a course of time. And the most common form of it is the most severe form of it, unfortunately. And there's all different, you know, types and subtypes and all this different stuff that I won't go into. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, the majority of people with it have a severe form that puts them in an automatic wheelchair pretty early in life. My specific type is called a uh, limb girdle. So that means that the, my, the muscles that are affected in my body are my limbs. Um, so like my legs uh, have been mainly affected and you have to get your heart checked because the heart, you know, is arguably the most important muscle. And um, there's many types of this disease that just causes you to pass at a really young age. And you know, the medication has a lot of real nasty symptoms. And I am super blessed that I have such a mild form. Um, it does affect me a lot. Like I can't run and I can't do sports um, anymore. I used to be able to. <clears throat> and, um, but I can walk and I can drive and um, that's amazing. But you know, places like the mall or, you know, just something, or like a festival or something, anywhere where there's like a lot of walking for long periods of time or standing for long periods of time, I use a mechanical wheelchair. Just the kind where you do it yourself um, because may as well try to help my arms stay strong in the process, um, even though my legs aren't. I I'm going like too into it. I don't think I'm going to be able to fit it all in this video, so maybe I could make another video where I go more into detail about the disease, but in general, <laughs> that's the disease. I have a mild form. Um, it does affect my day-to-day -day li my day -to -day life and the things that I can do and the jobs that I can apply for. There was a time where we thought that I might qualify for Make-A-Wish. I wasn't really expecting to get accepted though, just because I think that Make-A-Wish does focus more on, you know, kids and teens who are close to not being here for much longer. And that makes sense. And um, so I, I did apply just because I was like, what the heck, may as well try. Um, but I really, really kept my expectations low because, you know, it just didn't, 
if I did get it in all honesty, it wouldn't make much sense. There's no shade at all to make a wish. They are an amazing foundation. They help so many others that have um, a more deadly form of my disease. I'm gonna live a long, happy life. And yes, I will have difficulties and um, struggles because of my disease, but I'm gonna get to live it. So my wish was going to be something with Shawn Mendes. I my I really wanted to sing with him, um, which seems like a long shot. It is, but I really love to sing and I really, his writing really touches me. Music is something that I value and that affects me very strongly. A lot of people, you know, think of Shawn Mendes and just think of his you know, top singles that are just really catchy. Um, but, you know, for me as a fan, it's, you know, it's that song, it's song number 12 on the album that's completely forgotten about. It didn't top the charge, charge, <laughs> charge, it didn't top the charge. It didn't top, chop, uh, it didn't top the charts and, um, but I, yeah, those are the songs that I feel, you know, at least for me, affect me the most. Some people are more into the singles and that's fine. Like, I don't want to think of him as an item or a thing or, you know, something that I idolize. I just want to think of him as a person. Um, just a person who creates good music. If I had a poster of him, just for me personally, it would begin to feel, you know, that he was more of a character and not necessarily valued for the music, but valued for his looks. And that's not why I like him. And I feel like we'd be friends. You know when, <laughs> you know when there's like a celebrity and you, you just have the feel, you just have this feeling like if you met, you would be like such good friends. That's how I feel. Like I literally, if, and a lot of you are going to agree with me, if I could just sit down and like have coffee with him or something and just talk to him, and like I just want to have a conversation with him and just talk and get to know him. I want him to know that I exist. <laughs> I wasn't disappointed about the Make-A-Wish thing because I didn't have any any expectations that I would get it. It was just a long shot that we thought we'd try. And my mom kind of, you know, she's your mo she's my mom and so she wants me to get my wish. Obviously, she doesn't have the means or the money to let me sing with Shawn Mendes in a studio. Um, but the one thing that she felt that she could do was get me get me his concert tickets and so she did and she found a way to do so she you know juggled the budget around and she found a way to get me there um for my birthday and i'm just so grateful and i'm really excited it's just going to be so surreal and exceptional and amazing to see him in person, I don't know how I'm gonna hand. How, I don't know how I'm gonna react. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, I will link uh, the video of me getting pulled over in the description. I hope you have an amazing day. Chase after your dreams, even if it seems like it's impossible.